Well, hello and welcome to episode 353 of Photo Kitchen. I'm your humble host, MD Welch. And today on this hopefully relatively short video, I share with you maybe one of the better kept secrets, I don't know why it's a secret, inside of Adobe Lightroom and Adobe Lightroom Classic. Now, this seems to be a feature that has been snuck into Lightroom in a recent update. It is so sneaky that a lot of people have missed it. And even though that I'm sure I'm not the first person to do a YouTube video on this, I'm sure of that, it doesn't seem to have gained a lot of traction. Now, here's the crazy thing. It's not AI. It's not masking. It actually is a way to approach a very standard way of adjusting contrast and color inside of your image. Before I show you it and before I show you a killer workflow at the end of this video on how to implement this and use it, let's talk about the original problem. I have this image of Esther, a friend of mine, uh, doing some posing, uh, by the way, if you want to know the lighting details, on camera flash. Um, and there's been no editing done to the image whatsoever. You could check my development panel over here. The only thing I've done is some detail work and I've also turned on lens corrections. That's it. So nothing in the basics panel, nothing in tone curve. But I'm going to start in tone curve. I am in point curve. I'm not using what I call the training wheel section or the range section of the uh, adjustment here for tone curve. I'm using the point curve. Now, now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come down to here and I'm just going to use a preset. I'm going to use strong contrast. And when I do this, I'm going to zoom in and look closely at Esther's skin tone and lipstick color. If I hold down uh, the little eyeball that turns the adjustment or the panel on or off, if you look at that, you will see that there's a little bit of color in the lips and the flesh tones that have increased. Here's the thing. Almost every program on the planet, Photoshop, Lightroom, Capture One, doesn't make a difference. When you adjust contrast, you also adjust saturation. So when you increase contrast, you're going to get an increase in saturation. When you decrease contrast, you're going to decrease saturation. Now there's all sorts of workflows in other different programs. For example, inside of uh, Capture One, which I've already done this a little bit, they have in their curve adjustment, they have a Luma section. RGB would be just like the regular curve inside of Photoshop or Lightroom Classic or Lightroom, but they do add a Luma section, which only changes the luminance. I will get rid of the saturation here just to show you this and you will see that with this turned on or off you don't really see an increase in saturation. In fact, it kind of decreases the saturation. If you were over in the good old fashioned world of Photoshop, we would use adjustment layers and we would set a curves adjustment layer for contrast. We would set it to luminosity and then we would do an adjustment layer for contrast and we would set it to color. What you're doing here is you're separating adjustments of color and adjustments of luminance or contrast from each other. They're not impacting each other. Why is this critical? Because a client might walk in and say, well, we like this, but it's too saturated. No problem. I'll decrease the opacity slider here and pull away some saturation. Or they're like, it's a little too contrasty. The output on the printer, it's too much. Or we want some more. No problem. I'll increase this opacity slider and add some more contrast into this. I am not changing the saturation when I adjust the contrast and vice versa when I'm adjusting saturation. There's no adjustment to contrast. And this is very, very basic, but it has been a feature or something that's been missing inside of Adobe Lightroom Classic and Lightroom for years. So much so that some people don't even do color and contrast adjustments inside of Lightroom. They will go and do them inside of Photoshop. Well, I am here to tell you, followers of Photo Kitchen, those days are done because here is the secret. Inside the tone curve panel, underneath where the S curve that I just applied, there is this thing that says refine sat. And I think this was introduced in the fall 2023 Lightroom, Lightroom Classic release. I noticed it uh, later on after that, but I just didn't hear anybody really talking about that. I just don't think people understood or the AI is such a big deal and auto masking such a big deal. And it's just kind of like a feature that got buried. But what happens here is this is currently set to 100%. Watch what happens. I'm going to take it to zero. And I'm going to zoom back in on Esther's face here so you can see that lipstick and flush tone. I'm going to go back to 100, see how that saturation pops. And I'm going to go back to zero and see how the saturation is no longer uh, being applied. Now, if I really increase this, I'm going to go to Tone Curve, hold down Option on the Mac, Alt on PC. That will allow you to reset just about anything inside of Adobe Lightroom Classic. Look at that, a power tip at no extra cost. We're all about value here in the kitchen. I'm going to go ahead and click on Reset. It's going to flatten out that curve. I'm just going to really go heavy with this. I'm going to do a heavy S curve here. And, uh, and it might bleach out the flush tones just a little bit, but now I'll just come in, take this to zero, and you could see 
how those tones are going away. It's minute. But now I could come into the basics panel and I have my vibrance and my saturation sliders here and I could go ahead and add and add my color but then have my contrast be independent of it. This is huge. But there is a better way to do this or at least a better workflow or a more interesting workflow. I don't know how to categorize it. But what I'm gonna do is, uh, first of all, I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna switch images. I'm gonna switch back over to an image, has a little bit more color in it naturally. Now, just like the previous image, it doesn't have any adjustments going on in here. Um, I just did, again, some lens corrections and some detail, but you could see in the basics panel, tone curve, the eyeballs have nothing going on here. They're not illuminated. Great way to know whether or not you've made an adjustment. So what I wanna do here is I wanna create a way that I have more control over the contrast and saturation than I do in the normal interface. Here's the reason why, especially with contrast. If I come in here and do a heavy S curve on this image, and I'm just doing it really overdoing everything here uh, because of YouTube and you know compression, I wanna make sure that you could see this, but this is without contrast, this is with contrast, very heavy handed here. But the problem is if all of a sudden I want to, oh, that's just a little too bright, or the contrast is a little too heavy, I have to level out this curve. That is a real pain. So there's a better way. And I hope that you like this way. By the way, I hope that you like this video. If you have a moment, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. Get ready to share this, hopefully with other people who need this trick as well. We appreciate your support here at Photo Kitchen. I'm gonna come and collapse down tone curve. I'm not gonna be in any panel here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come up to that little toolbar inside of Adobe Lightroom Classic. I'm gonna click on the mask button and then I'm gonna select a brush and I'm just gonna paint a small little brush stroke just to click and release. I got a little dot there. I'm gonna come up to that masks panel and I'm going to rename this to contrast. And then I am going to click on the little ellipse or three dots here and I'm going to invert this. So now the entire adjustment is what you see is going to be green. So I make an adjustment anywhere you see green in this image or whatever your overlay color, which is can be adjusted right there. Uh, whatever you see there, that is going to be adjusted by the mask. So I'm gonna fill in that little hole by just painting over it. And now I have an entire adjustment layer, right? It's a mask, but it's an adjustment layer. So now I'm gonna come back over to the development uh, column here on the right-hand side. I'm gonna to go to curve. It's already set up in point. I'm gonna do exactly what I mentioned before. I'm gonna do a really heavy handed amount of contrast. I like to do heavy handed adjustments and back them off because I wanna see, I wanna go too far and then be able to back off those adjustments a little bit later on. I'm gonna go ahead and take that saturation all the way down to zero. So now this is only adjusting the actual contrast in the image, but here's the extra thing. Now with this adjustment layer or adjustment mask or just mask, depending on how you wanna look at it, I have an amount slider here and it's currently set at 100. And one thing I do like is you can increase it, right? You could crank up the volume. Uh, on any adjustment that you've made with the mask and go a little bit more if you want to. But in this case, I'm just gonna back it off a little bit, maybe somewhere right around there. There you go, contrast with adjustment. If somebody goes, oh, that just has a little too much contrast, you're not going in and trying to flatten out this ridiculous interface of the curve. You could just back off an adjustment layer. And this is what we've been doing in Photoshop for years by being able to use the opacity slider and doing the exact same thing with our adjustments. So let me hop back over to Lightroom Classic and get ready because there's more. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come to contrast. I'm gonna duplicate this uh, contrast layer. I'm gonna rename it to saturation. If I can spell saturation correctly. If I did not, I apologize in advance. So I'm gonna come in, I'm gonna double click on the arrow here. I'm gonna reset it back to 100 for the amount. I'm gonna hold down the option or alt key on the keyboard so that word reset pops up for the curve. I'll reset my curve, collapse it down, go to color. Unfortunately, you don't have vibrance here. You only have saturation, but that's okay. In a lot of cases, that's all that we need. And it, just like I did before, I'm probably gonna go a little bit too far, right? And now I have both saturation and contrast. I have them as adjustment layers or adjustment masks, again, whatever term that you want to use. And then you could come into here and you can just decrease the values in the amount slider. So now you have simple control over powerful techniques. Yeah, it's not AI, it's not masking, but it is very powerful for your adjustment. And it's a huge time saver as well. And it also gives you a better way to approach your imagery. Now, if you don't think that this is important, if you don't think that separating saturation from uh, contrast is uh, a big deal, I'm gonna hop over into Lightroom and just show you that I did this here. This was a house file that I photographed many years ago. And I've already uh, done my curve. I've already done the mask here. We'll just go ahead and rename it to contrast. Again, if I could spell contrast correctly. 
RST, yeah, it looks good to me. Now, if I come into here, I already have this at zero, but watch the concrete here. Watch the driveway in front of the firefighter. If I crank this all the way up to 100, I have a nice amount of contrast. I'll show you what that looks like. I'll just go ahead and turn the eyeball off. So the contrast needed here, right? It was a little washed out, so I've done my contrast. But look how it's starting to blow out detail in certain areas of the image because it's oversaturating them and the saturation is taking over essentially like luminance. But if I back this all the way to 100, see how that, see how there's detail that comes back in the image? It doesn't look so nuclear. It doesn't look over-processed. Why do you, so many of our images look over-processed? Because we've been adding so much contrast that's been pushing the saturation. We need to separate the two. This is what that video does. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you enjoy the workflow. I hope it uh, allows you to look at imagery a little bit different. I would love to hear in the comments section below, uh, are you already doing something like this? Did you even know about this feature? Uh, it's always great to hear where you guys are in your progress. Uh, I thank you for watching. I thank you for making it this far. And as always, I am MD Welch, wishing you all the best from Photo Kitchen.